What is up guys, Noli here, and welcome to Payday 2, the Stealth Roadmap. Normally I don't go through announcements released by Almir on the Steam... Well, if I do, on the Steam announcement page, on the um, the group, community group, basically. Uh, if I do go through them, they just tend to be updates. But this is a projected update, how they are going to change the stealth system. And this is something very close to my heart, because I do a lot of Payday, I do a lot of stealthing. Uh, equally, it's something that we've been discussing a lot, especially since the Death Wish difficulty, and I know Overkill have been watching, and here they are, answering our prayers, and the, the way I'm basically going to go through this, I'm first of all going to read it to you, then I'm going to go through the changes, what I think they're going to do, then I will go through basically telling you guys what I think the changes maybe could do, uh, how they could improve maybe even further on what they're doing, and also basically when I believe these things are going to be uh, eked into the payday system. So, let's give it a read. Heisters, last week we launched the new Death Wish difficulty. Since then we've watched you and your crews tearing up the streets of Washington DC. We're glad to see that you guys are brave enough to step into the line of fire against these new elite law enforcers. The level of commitment you guys have when it comes to stealing gold, cash and jewelry is impressive. And you've painted the city red, no doubt. As you're probably aware, we at Overkill take our jobs seriously. We've read your feedback, and we'd like to announce something that's been in the works for some time. A major stealth update. Yeah, that's right. With You, you read that right. With the help of your feedback, we've come up with a plan for all you sneaky bastards out there lurking in the shadows. Let's get to the point. Here's what we're working on for the upcoming free stealth update. So... First of all, we learn it's free. No surprise there. We we sort of known some changes have been coming to the skill trees, and to the game itself. Now, starting here is something that I I know I've mentioned before to some of you. Whether I've actually mentioned it in video, I don't remember. Moving cable tied civilians. Nothing says I own you more than having a controllable hostage. As soon as you subdued them and zip tied a civilian, you will be able to tell them uh, to follow you around by interacting with them. Whenever the situation demands it, you can interact with the hostage again, and they'll lie down on the spot. Okay, so what does this mean exactly? Now, what, what I've always wanted to see, and I understand why it's not really an option. First of all, I think it'd be really cool if we had takedown animations. I know they can be quite difficult to place into a multiplayer co-op online game, but takedown animations would be nice. Uh... <laughs> Just a little heads up to you guys. I like that sort of stuff. Maybe I'm just immature like that. But I've always wanted to knock out civilians. It just seems so silly that I smack a guy on the head with my gun and oh, he's he's dead now. Um, naturally, for the way the game works, if you just go around knocking out all the civilians with absolutely no repercussions, then the game would be far too easy. So I understand why that is not a thing. And honestly, I've not really thought of a way around being able to knock out civilians beyond them possibly waking up and immediately phoning the police. I don't know, make it a risk of some sort. But what this means is you can subdue them and carry them around. So, not literally carry them around. So whether you can do this during combat, I'm not sure whether maybe they're... the cops are going to shoot at you less with a civilian at your side, or... Here's the way I imagine it. You basically make the civilian follow you, either because you don't want to be spotted by a guard on his patrol, that's obviously the most simple reason why, or because you want to place them somewhere where the assault team is basically going to be slow time down. So you know, you guys should be aware of how the assault team works to spend time freeing civilians. Civilians can be just as much of a distraction as they are an ability to revive your teammates. So if you get them down in specific places, you can possibly block off the police and force them to take longer before the assault can happen. So by placing them in certain choke points with this new uh, cable tie change, we could definitely see some new innovative ways to stealth and indeed deal with the, with the cops. So, moving on to the stealth reward system. Enjoy the feeling of walking away as if the crime never happened. We've got some good news for you. Finishing a stealth house will award you an XP boost. That boost will then apply to the next contract you choose. You can spend it on any job, stealthable or not, but only on the next con uh, contract. Once you've spent it, it's gone. You can obtain the XP boost again by completing a heist in stealth at any given time. The stealth bonus stacks through the days, so a full three day successful stealth will be greater than one successful stealth day and one failed. But you'll still get a bonus. So, an interesting way to reward stealthers. I've always felt like an experience or possibly monetary bonus should be added for stealthing. It's harder to stealth, without a doubt. Um, 
and it's it's cooler. You know, you you get in, you get out. the The way they slowly started to improve stealth is by adding the uh, car chases, which have become less and le- uh, less and less of a problem as the game has progressed through the months. So. I'm glad they're going to be rewarding the uh, stealthers. I feel like maybe there should be a slightly greater reward than just experience, but maybe that's just me. Uh, everyone gets one body bag by default. Now, this is a highly contentious point. People are confused about the body bag changes. I understand them, and I actually, without bringing on too much hate, I quite like the changes. It limits you. It makes you think about where you're shooting the enemies. Uh, I don't like how it can make certain missions impossible, and I think this is what they're trying to deal with with the following changes. So, everyone gets one body bag by default. Um, the title says it all. Apologies, I am back. I wasn't entirely sure what I was saying, but half an hour later <laughs> to talk again about everyone getting a body bag by default. So. As it says here, the title says it all, Bane heard you like body bags, so he decided to give one to every one of you. I'm going to continue talking about the rest before I sort of talk about this as an entire change, because they're all quite related. Now, ghosts get one additional body bag. The cleaner skill would give the ghost one additional body bag, two in total. Cleaner? You have to go for an entire skill to... Surely you can spare three. Ghosts also get the body bag asset. If I want to share your body bags with the crew so you can stealth together, this asset linked to the cleaner skill is perfect for Hitman and their gang members. With this skill, the ghost will be able to buy a body bag asset which contains three body bags. The asset is placed on a uh, predetermined spot and will be accessible for everyone in your cl- uh, crew, including yourself. So, this is the fix. Simple as that. Being able to get three more body bags uh, it, it basically makes every mission stealthable as we remember it. Um, sort of forgetting the change to the Joker perk um, and the newly spawning guards, or the more frequently spawning guards, which they address a little later on. The idea that, let's count the body bags. You can have, if everybody has the ghost skill, eight body bags on you, which is almost certainly enough, right? But on top of that, the cleaner skill, I should say, you can have another three, I believe. Yeah, three body bags. So that's, what was I on? Eleven. Now, eleven is the max. But let's just say in a more realistic term, you're going to see maybe two maximum at ghost. Let's say with one. So we have a ghost. He has two body bags. He buys this asset, bringing three more. That's five. Plus the three from the other team members, that is eight. Is that plenty? I would say that is going there, and also, instead of just being able to body bag everybody, it adds more teamwork, so you can you can basically, instead of having like one ghost and then three guys sitting at the back, the ghost is going to have to call these guys forward to body bag and retreat again, and it makes them more useful to the whole mission. So you can bring your enforcer along, he can be dressed like an enforcer, but we are going to need him during the stealth part of the mission. I like that. I definitely think it's a change in the right direction. I still think the cleaner skill has been nerfed heavily from what it was, but even so, at least it's getting a slight improvement. Um, Even though it feels a bit like a nerf because everyone gets a body bag now. So we actually might see fewer people buying it, so whether it's a good change or not, we'll have to see. The Dominator skill... Whoops, I wasn't supposed to go like that. The Dominator skill and the new Alarm Pager Operators. So every player with a dominator skill can now dominate one guard each at the same time. Uh, that needs a little bit of clarification. But apparently the old pager operators got fired, and more experienced operators are taking over. So clear your throats and get ready to answer the pager as soon as you dominate a guard. Okay, so this change is, again, a little contentious. So, you may say what this has done is made the whole dominate a perk as a ghost completely useless, right? Because... Instead, of, the reason why you used to dominate is because you didn't want the pager to go off. Um, but now you dominate them and the pager goes off. But we can do it four times. Well, isn't that just the same as killing four guys? Well, what this is basically going to be is the dominator is going to be used instead of body bags. So, also I believe I can't really say at this point. You're going to be able to dominate a guy, a guard from a distance, answer the pager on him easy enough. 
Um, obviously going into, or I believe obviously going into your four available um, pages with the Dominator skill, or the Smooth Talker skill, I should say. Um, and then you're able to tell him to follow you, and you can sit him down somewhere else. I believe this is how it's going to be, and that's going to allow you to basically remove a guard without ever shooting him. But, here's what's extremely important. How many guards are there in missions? Let's say, at the least, in the top end mission, seven? Seven guards! Um, that's, a, that's a lot of pages. That's seven pages. Let's say one of the guards is away and you don't have to bother with them, that's six. Now you can't dominate. You can't dominate and you can't joker in stealth. You can't dominate in order to, I guess, remove the pager from the map. And you cannot um, joker either. So there's two pages that are going to have to sit on the map. And it means you can only kill four of the enemies, so the problem seems to still exist. You're still going to have to be pussyfooting around two of the remaining guards. Is this a good or a bad thing? I think we should possibly get the choice. Or, because they evidently want that, and I can understand them wanting people to... Uh, wanting everyone to, to avoid the guards as opposed to, oh, I've killed the six guards, or I've neutralised the six guards. Now I don't have to think about anything else. You know, the mission's just, I can just roam around. That's obviously why they had new guard patrols, but I also feel like, because they evidently want it, so we leave them walking around, so it's consistently tense, give people a reward for that, and make it a sizable reward, so people work around that. You know, a, a pacifist reward of sorts. Um... Instead of making it so you basically can't take them all out, that just seems a little heavy to me. As far as I'm concerned, they're making these updates to make each high slightly more unique and memorable. Um, but by basically cutting it down so you can only you can't kill all the enemies, you can only do it by leaving a couple of them alive. Is that not forcing everyone to follow the same style of play? Uh, following a very simple meta. I don't know whether that's necessarily what we want to see. I like the idea of diversity, so possibly tweaking that may be worth looking at. Definitely the pages needs to be considered. Um, now, looking at the balance of the spawning guard patrols, they've been a real pain with Deathwish, basically making most Deathwish missions sort of random pot look, but these changes are very good, if you ask me, particularly the second one. So, the spawning patrol guards will still appear, but we're balancing the time interval based on the highest difficulty. Good stuff, you're going to see them a lot on Deathwish, but you're going to find the easier missions just easier to stealth. I like that. Definitely keep it hard at the higher levels um, and easier for the newer players. But also, Bane has promised to be more observant regarding the patrols, so he'll let you know whenever they send in new guards and roughly when they'll arrive. Okay, so what this is going to do is allow you to prepare with your new ability to bag and move cops, or to dominate and then move cops. To move them out of the way and keep the patrolling guard in your eyes, basically. Make sure you know where they are, you know roughly where they're going to come from, and basically the only way they're going to be able to catch you if you're not lax, so if you're not basically dozing off, is if they spawn on top of a mistake you've made. So, good stuff. I, I really like that change where Bane is going to call out to you and you have the time to respond. That's definitely the right way to go with the, the guard patrols, because they did add a new element, again, making the heist slightly more diverse. One way to diversify heists overkill is by adding more. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a huge complainer about this. I actually think there's a reasonable number, but uh, definitely, definitely hope to see more. I enjoy the heist, and when new one comes out, oh, it come out, it's extremely exciting. So finally, I know I've sort of gone on for a little too long about my own personal opinions and my way of doing things. I'm going to go through the spotter asset, and you guys in the comment section below, make sure to let me know what you think. I know we have lots of ghosts out there, I've played with you. How has this update been hurting you? And how do you think these changes are going to fix the hurt? Uh, because as it is, I definitely think it's again a step in the right direction. But just reward us more. Reward us for doing difficult things if you're going to make them difficult. That's, that's the way I see it. Because we like rewarding games. One of the things that I think has really hurt Payday while, you know, they've possibly given it more hours of playtime before you can complete it is they've really hurt experience gain and money gain and that's exciting you love gaining money god i remember playing um firestarter in the first few weeks and getting millions millions in my offshore and an absolute ton of experience i love that that's really exciting 
So possibly consider a revision to the experience system as far as rewards are concerned. Now the spotter is a new stealth asset. He's similar to uh, Elijah the sniper and stays hidden somewhere off the map, but instead of killing guards and law enforcers, he'll spot them and highlight them for you and your crew. Nice idea, won't be integrated into every map, but certainly is going to help for, say, framing frame on the last day. Uh, I, I imagine, or I hope, he'll only spot guards if they walk past sort of windows or glass anywhere or they go outside. I think that's the way they should try and do it. I'm not entirely certain how the sniper himself worked, but what they're most likely going to do is giving him the exact same AI as the sniper and then instead of him dropping enemies dead, he is going to spot them. Simple as that. Nice new change again, it's going to help us by watching out for the spawning guard patrols. So everything seems to integrate very nicely. Definitely what we want to see. They're also balancing the amount of guards and civilians on each map and difficulty now. This is important because you, you heard me complaining before about the idea of the pages. But they're evidently going to keep it high for Death Wish, so... I guess in that sense the playstyles are going to be diversified primarily by the difficulty you play on. But having all the top end Death Wish players playing in exactly the same way does not seem like the right way to take the game. And that's why I just want to see a slight revision to this change. Going forward, we'll gradually roll out these changes to the stealth system, let us know what you think of the planned changes above, and stay tuned for more information regarding the coming stealth update. Again, thanks for all the feedback and discussions. Almir, Overkill, a Starbury Studio. Good stuff. It is. It really is movement in the right direction. Uh, it, it's always lovely to see that, first of all, they're warning us of these <laughs> changes before they just drop them on us, and equally that they are uh, considering some of the complaints and the improvements we've suggested. Looking at the comments as I have on the um, on this page, the overall consensus is people don't like the changes to the bags. Uh, no one seems to have really picked up heavily on the pager issues that I have, uh, but they definitely don't feel like the way the domination on guards is going to work is necessarily going to be beneficial similar to me. So that that's what I've seen so far. As far as when these things are going to be coming out, as they say they can be rolling them out over time, we are likely going to see another reasonably hyped up update concerning the stealth system possibly containing a new map. That's the way I see it. Uh, it will be free, the update, when it does come. They said that earlier, and this is not the sort of thing that you can split a community with. You know, half the community playing with this old stealth system, half with the new. That That doesn't make much sense. So, overall, as I said, movement in the right direction, and it's great to see Overkill are paying attention. That's why you guys be vocal here on this page. I'm going to link in the description, and also be vocal on my videos because I do believe they see them. It, it does flow down through me, uh, or flow down to me, I should say. <laughs> I'm probably the bottom rung of the payday civilization. Anyway, guys, I hope you have enjoyed my video. Uh, just talking about the new stealth changes that will be coming to payday quite shortly, we hope. And, again, leave your own suggestions down below. Thanks a lot. See you all in the next one.